Hi there everyone. So this session is going to be additional to the main part of the course, a fairly short session, talking about how we can make our R code a bit more permanent. So if you're taking the course internally to the society, this is going to be essential knowledge for submitting your homeworks to your mentor, to have it marked and um, get your certification at the end. But if you're taking part in this course externally, watching the YouTube videos, this is also very important for learning how to be able to share your code with others um, which are finished with your analysis and also saving them for your later use. And so I'm going to run through two things um, in this session. It's going to be our scripts and our notebooks. And we'll cover scripts a bit in the, in the course itself, um, but notebooks are a topic we won't get into. So it's really worth um, having a look at this short session now. Okay, so we're going to start with our scripts. Because we've seen from the first session, uh, let me make my font a bit bigger that we can run code by typing it directly into the R console. So I can do R, sorry, one plus two. Um, I could do, say, um, load the tidyverse and then print out the Malpagal data set. I can do all that, but um, that's very um, ephemeral. As soon as I close our studio, uh, all that code and output is lost. And so it's not a very good way for doing more permanent and important work. Just trying things out, it's okay. But if we want to do something important, especially if we want to share things uh, with other people or save it for later, we need a better solution. And so to do that, we can create an R script. So to do that, we go inside of R Studio to File, New File, and R Script. And so you can think of this as um, like, you know, it's a text document um, where we can write our R code and save it for later. So how this um, script editor at the top differs from the console at the bottom is that we can type things into the, the script and it won't be ran immediately. If I type mpg here and press new line, enter, it's going to um, run the code. Or more specifically, once R has sensed that um, a line is complete, if I can open a bracket, do one plus two, new line, um, I haven't closed the bracket yet, R, R can tell we're not complete uh, with what we're writing, but once I close that bracket, then um, R will evaluate it and give us the response. A script differs in that we can write code, say mpg, and add new line, and nothing happens just yet. And so there's two branches of this. Um, one, it allows us to kind of lay out our ideas before running things. And secondly, um, this is a more kind of permanent way of storing things. This, uh, this line mpg uh, exists kind of permanently now in this file, Whereas with the console, it kind of got lost somewhere in our history. And so we can write various lines. Say so we'll have um, mpg there. We can then create a ggplot of um, the Malpa Gallon data set. So we'll do just a very standard one. Um, we'll do uh, highway mileage and city mileage. And then the way we run code is by putting our cursor um, on the block of code that we want to run and clicking the run button here. You can see our, our cursor is on the line that says mpg. If we run that, it's going to send that to the console. So actually, I'll just clear the console so we can see this clearly happening. I click run, and that sends that across to the console and evaluates it. And so you know, we run the mpg command and get the output down here. And this mpg command, it stays in this script. And so you know we can come back to this later and run it again. It doesn't disappear into our history like it did in the console. And you can see that when, when I click run, it um, moved the cursor to the next block of code. So I can now click run on this, and that's going to um, realize that this is all kind of one block of code. It all kind of does the same thing. And so run all that together and give us the output over in the plot window here. So that's scripts. Um, typically, when we're writing a script, we want to start it with the libraries that, that we're using by importing them. So I can do library and then tidyverse. And this just lets people know that if you want to run this script, um, the first thing we're gonna do is load the tidyverse and therefore you'll need the tidyverse installed. Um, it's generally bad advice to do something like install.packages at the start of a script, um, just because you shouldn't be messing with other people's environments. And so if you were going to share a script that had install.packages, that would be considered a bit rude. But putting library at the start is fine. If we try to, um, import a package that we didn't have um, installed already. Um, I guess 
you know, let's say tiny versus, that's not a real package, let's say it was. If you go to run this, it'll give us an error saying there's no package. And I, as um, a user that this code has been shared with, would go, oh, you know, I must have to install this, this package and I could find out how to do that. So we had that run command there. If you hover over, you'll see a shortcut, um, which is control enter. You can quickly get through code by pressing control enter. And there's various other things we can do here. So sourcing is going to run the whole script. Um, so we click that, it's going to run the whole thing. Um, and sourcing with echo is going to run the whole thing and um, actually tell us the commands uh, that were ran. We're just sourcing, it kind of runs it in the background. So that's kind of a brief introduction to um, scripts. If you want to then save a script, um, just as we would with a Word document, you can do file, uh, save as, and put that somewhere on our hard drive. Let's say I'm going to call this um, test underscore script, save that. Uh, we can now see the files. We'll have a, uh, I go back to the root here, test script there. And um, if I close that, I can do file open and uh, open that script again. And now I have this, I can um, source it, let's say run all of it, and I'll get the same output that I had before. There's a great way for storing things for later. Um, yeah. Okay, so the next thing we'll look at is an R notebook. And that kind of takes um, what R scripts do and kind of supercharges them, makes them a bit more advanced. The scripts are very good for things that um, are mainly kind of doing processing. Um, that don't require much user input or for the user to kind of um, see a lot of output interactively. But if we want yeah, a more interactive way of working, we can create an R notebook. And so to do that, um, to close this script, um, yes, yeah, so we can go to File, New File, and R Notebook. And so an R notebook combines together um, text and R code. And it's a style of programming known as literate coding. So combining kind of literacy, um, all this kind of text here, with code embedded in the document. And this is a really nice way of working for creating interactive documents um, that have some sort of explanation that go along with them. And so there's a few properties we, we can change. We can do um, a title at the top here. So my um, test notebook. Uh, we could have uh, an author say, it's going to be uh, Tim, and uh, we could have um, the date. So today is the um, 22nd of October, 2020. Okay, so that's kind of some stuff at, at the top. Um, and then inside the notebook itself, let's just delete kind of um, the stuff it comes with. We can uh, just type some, some text. So this is my notebook, and um, let's look at the um, MPG data set. And so now what we can do, that's just on some text, we can add a code block. And that's a place where we can um, write code, write our code, and have it run inside of the notebook. And so to do that, we click this insert button at the top here, a little drop down, and we choose what language we want to insert. So for this course, we're going to certainly want to import R, so we insert an R block, but um, RStudio is capable of running Python, uh, D3 is a JavaScript library, and various other things like that. We'll create an R code block like that. And then inside of here, we can type our R code. We could load the tidyverse library, and then we'll print out the MPG data set. And so to run this cell, we can just click this play button here. It's going to evaluate it and display the output below. And there's another one here, which is run everything above this. Um, and so you may have this block being dependent on other blocks that come before it. So clicking that's a nice way to bring everything um, up to date before running this one. And we'll see if we click on this uh, drop down near run here, there's um, a few more options. We can run uh, the selected line just as we did with um, an R script, run the current chunk. Um, chunk is another word for these code blocks. Um, and various other things. We can see the shortcuts for them as well. You can create another code block below this. Um, Control Alt I is the shortcut for that. So Control Alt and then I for insert. Let's create a ggplot, so the Mavagal data set, um, point geometry, and we'll do X is highway and Y is city mileage. 
then I can either use the play button or control shift enter is the shortcut for that. And that runs that code block there and creates the output below. And as before, we can save uh, this document wherever we, we want it. And um, our scripts have a file type of .r and notebooks have a file type of .rmd. And the reason for that is that um, an R notebook combines R, the language, and this thing called Markdown. And so Markdown is a very minimal um, language or kind of syntax for stylizing text. And so um, let's you know, create this document here. We'll call it test uh, notebook. And then what we can do, we can um, actually export this as um, various different types of document. If we go on this preview thing and click, click the drop down here, you can see the different types we can export to. So uh, we can have a look at like a notebook. This is kind of just like a, a web in, interface for it. We get something like this. We could export to HTML, uh, which is a web page, um, a PDF document or a Word document. And for PDF, you might need to install um, a few things first, but our studio should guide you through that. If I knit to a PDF, um, I get something like this. So I've just created a very professional um, PDF document with my graphs in. And so now I'll explain what Markdown does. The Markdown is a formatting language for um, stylizing text. And I'm not going to go through all the syntax of Markdown. If you just have a Google for maybe Markdown cheat sheet, you'll find some good resources and quick guides on how to use Markdown. But one thing you can do is use um, asterisks to mean bold. If I put some um, asterisks around um, MPG and then knit again, as so the knitting is the term of actually making a document, we'll see that, oh, sorry, messed that up. Um, an asterisk is italics, two asterisks is bold. You can see that was italics there. If I put um, maybe two asterisks around my, this is my notebook, and I knit that, then we'll see that's going to come out in bold. And there's various other things we can do with Markdown. We can import images. We can do um, kind of uh, things formatted as code. Um, there really is quite a lot of capability tables, for example. So just have a look at um, any Markdown tutorials if you want to learn more about that. And so the thing you're going to be sending to your, um, your mentor as the final homework, it should either be an R script, but um, preferably should be um, an R Markdown document or an exported format, say a PDF exported that. So that concludes this session. Um, if there's any questions about this, then obviously you can um, go through your mentor if you're doing this internally, or um, you can get in contact via the methods mentioned in um, the first session otherwise. So thank you, and I'll see you in the second session.